stuff like this. So I'm glad you guys like it. Um, all right. So this is what I wanted to do tonight. I figured I had so much fun doing my past live streams. Uh, we did the Ninja Turtles one about a week ago. It was really fun. Had a great turn turnout for that. I know that was like a really highly anticipated item. Um, but tonight I thought we would do some more toy unboxings. And I figured maybe this is something I can try to do with you guys weekly just to hang out. Let you guys all know that I'm here, say what's up, interact with some of you guys, and uh, also open up some toys. Uh, yeah, I'm seeing a lot of comments about my haircut. Yes, I totally I totally cut my hair off short. Um, it's really getting hot outside for the summer, and I just decided, you know what? It's way easier to shave this off than to go maintain it at a barbershop. So that's, I guess that's just where I am now. I just cut my hair short. Uh, you know, it's funny, actually, like a couple weeks ago, actually almost a month ago, I shaved my, my hair, but I left... I left the mohawk in the middle, and I left it that way for like three or four days, and I really liked it, uh, but I ultimately like shaved it off because, I don't know, I just, I I had to go back to work, and I was like, oh, everybody's going to like my, talk about my hair, and I don't know, I got weird and self-conscious about it, so I shaved the mohawk off, uh, but I really liked it, and I think I'm going to try it again, so if I do, are you guys going to like make fun of me a whole bunch? <laughs> Yeah, bebop style, totally. I, I I liked it. It wasn't like a big crazy mohawk. It was just you know nice kind of short, shaved line down the middle, you know. And I I thought it looked really cool. So, yep, Spencer Powers, exactly, Yoda. I did it. I did it for that. <laughs> uh, but I I really liked it. So I don't know. I'm I'm gonna give it a try. I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna do it for the conventions coming up in the summer. So like, when you guys see me at San Diego Comic Con, I might be rocking that mohawk and. I can't wait to see all the ridiculous YouTube comments I get. Everybody's going to be talking about my hair. But, you know, that's how it is. <laughs> all right. So, um, what I wanted to do tonight is... I've, I've had these for a little bit. Uh, the folks over at Spiro Toys, or Spiro Studios, sent these to me uh, a couple weeks ago. But I've been really backlogged. I have a lot of stuff that I've been trying to review and keep up with. It's, it's crazy, my stack over here. Um, so that's why I thought maybe doing these live shows would be a really fun way to kind of get to some of this stuff. So I don't know if you guys have seen these or if you've kept up with these at all. But this is a toy line called Animal Warriors of the Kingdom. And it's, it was a Kickstarter that was successful, like shot way past its goal. And they just delivered this year. There are three and three quarter inch action figures, um, but they're all done in the style of different animals. It's like apes and wolves and cats and stuff like that. And there are all these different warriors here. And I thought it would be a good time to do these now because they just launched a brand new Kickstarter for a deluxe series of Animal Warriors of the Kingdom, um, which I actually linked to in the description for this stream. So if you guys want to go look at it, because they're doing like big gorillas and stuff like that now, and they're pretty cool looking. So, um, I know there's a lot of people out there that like collecting the four inch stuff. Um, you know, guys like Boss Fight Studio have made some amazing stuff with their Vertuvian hacks line and stuff like that. So these are like nice complimentary pieces to those. So, uh, I think I, I think I would, I thought it'd be cool to open these up. Uh, yeah, there's a couple people that mentioned that they look a little bit like Thundercats. Somebody mentioned that they look like Lego Chima. Uh, totally. I totally get some of those vibes too. And in fact, um, as far as like the Thundercats vibe go, like there's some obvious homages in this line. Okay. Like look at the color scheme of this guy's armor. Like this guy's na name is Atreyu. I mean, he's obviously modeled after lion -O. And then one of my favorite homages is this guy right here. Toxius, who is an obvious homage to Stinkor from Masters of the Universe. Um, so, you know, it's it, there's some fun stuff going on here. Um, but, you know, they've got a lot of uh, original characters here, too. They're not, like, all homages. Um, you know, like, I, I love this kind of, like, ape-looking guy here. And, you know, this guy looks more like kind of like a wolf-type guy. Ooh, get some glare. There we go. See, like, the wolf-looking guy here? His name's Scraps. I like that. Scraps. Scraps the dog. So, um, I already opened up, so this is, this is like the main character in the line. His name is Pale, and he's an ape of some sort. And this is the back of the packaging, so you can see kind of all the, the characters that they did. Now, they did like uh, stories with this and everything. I think there's like a comic that even goes with it, so that's always pretty cool. And they did that thing where like they made the packaging collector friendly, so you can easily slide the card back out of the blister. It's real easy to like pop the figure out but if you want to put it back in you know you can you can slide it back in the blister so i thought that was pretty cool so this is pale right here this is the first figure and um let me bring in my tape measure here let's see if i can even do this so you guys can see it good 
So yeah, put some, oh yeah, right about, right at the four inch mark. I don't know if you guys can really make that out. And I apologize um, for the camera because it's a good camera. It's a great HD like streaming camera, but it definitely like focuses on me in the background more than the figures. Like I would, I want to bring them up here so I can get a close look, but I can't get this camera to like, like focus on it. Like, don't look at me, look at the figure. So we're going to have to deal with that tonight. And that's just something I'm going to have to work out for, um, for future stream, for future streams. So let's uh, let's go over these guys just so you guys know what to expect here. Um, they they have a nice little range of articulation here. You can see the head has got the nice ball joint going on there. So I'm like rolling that all the way around there. You can see they got the nice ball like joints at the shoulders, so the arms can go up. They can move forwards and backwards. I actually just popped this arm off. Um, it looks like they're kind of like those little socket joints, so they can just plug back in there. Popped off a little easy. Um, I, I know they've got like interchangeable hands, I think, or they could. Maybe they don't. No, actually, I don't see any interchangeable hands. So I guess that's something to watch out for. The arm just kind of popped right off there. Um, and then you can swivel at the wrists there as well. Boy, that yeah, that arm just keeps falling off. So I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. Um, you can kind of rock it at the waist there. The legs are on the hinge joints at the thighs. It's kind of hindered by the, uh, it looks like the sculpt here a little bit. But you can move the legs forwards and backwards. Uh, like got double joints at the knees. So you can kind of see there. And I, I, I ran into this last time. I'm not used to like showing this stuff like in front of me. So if my hands get in the way, I'm sorry. I'm going to do my best to keep my hands out of the way so you guys can see what I'm doing there. And then it looks like the ankles have the ability to kind of go up and down. They got the nice little pivot joint there as well as swivel side to side. Uh, the joints are a little loose in the leg. They're not like floppy loose too much, but they're a little loose. He does stand okay. I had him standing on the table over here just fine. Um, so it could be a little more solid feeling. I definitely feel like they could be a little more solid feeling. The sculpt is great. I like the design, the articulation. I feel like could be just a little bit tighter in this guy. Um, he's got a bunch of accessories. He actually does have an interchangeable head. He's got like a wolf head here. I'm going to try real hard to get this to focus a little bit so you guys can see it. Cause he's got like this monkey head and it looks like I can pull this off. Oh, but it pulled like the whole joint out of the neck. Let's see. See if I can get it back in there and, oh, that's going to be one of those things. So the joint is stuck in the neck, in the head, come came out of the neck. And that's going to be one of those things that you're almost going to need like a warm it up or a hair dryer probably to pop it out. So, oh, you know what? I'm wrong. Okay. That's a mistake on my part. This is what happens when you do it live. The joints are inside the heads already. It's a little bit different than most, uh, most interchangeable heads on figures. I think that's why it threw me off because usually the pegs stay in the torso. So the pegs are actually inside the head. There we go. And so now, now he's, he's a wolf. He just changed from like an ape to a wolf, wolf-like character. So that's, that's kind of cool that you've got some options to switch up, uh, the characters a little bit. So it kind of gives you room to build out the characters and, um, get some multiple display options out of them. Uh, we got a bunch of weapons here. Let's see. So we got like this giant sword and he's got a spear and we got a little bow. No string on the bow, just like a little bow. So there's a, that's Pale. That's the first guy right there. That's him. Yeah, that's focusing a little better. That gives you a good good kind of look at him right there. So there you go. That's him. So um, I'm going to go ahead and open up some of these other ones here. Yeah, somebody said it seems a little fragile. I definitely think that the joints are a little loose on it. Like just a little looser than I would like them to be. It was obviously built in the way where like the joints can pop out of socket pretty easy. But it's kind of one of those things where like it pops out a little too easy. Because you can see just by articulating the elbow, it pops out of socket. Now I can pop it back in and it stays in. It's not falling out. But when I move it, it's just real easy to bump it and pop it out of socket. So... Um, I know, um, Jason of Spiro studios, uh, when he reached out to me, he told me that, um, they were aware of some early QC stuff and they were working it out for future waves. So I guess maybe that might be one of the things he was talking about. So definitely worth noting, definitely worth noting. I'm going to open up, uh, Toxious because he looks like Stinkor. I want to open up the guy that looks like Stinkor. So inside there, you got like, look at like, there's all these weapons. Oh, that's, that's really interesting. So we got a couple interchangeable heads in there as well as all of his weapons are also blue, just like Stinkor's blue shield. So it's quite obvious what this homage is. Check them out. 
Seems to focus better when I'm on this side. I'll move over. So check that out. Oh, I bumped my camera. So there he is. Oh, look, he's actually got like, you see like this, the skunk stripe painted down his back there. So that's kind of cool. Oh, everybody's talking to Toy Bro in there. <laughs> Everybody say shout out to Toy Bro. He's got an awesome channel. You guys should go check him out. But af after my stream. Don't leave my stream to go check out Toy Bro stuff. All right, so. I'm going to open up this little bag right here. We're going to pull out some of his weapons. So it looks like we got a little blue sword. It's totally just like flat blue too. Like the, it, it, like it's obvious. Like there's no details on it because it's very obvious they were doing the homage to Stinkor's old blue shield. Like a little sigh. That's pretty cool. There's two of those. Oh, there are. There's two of them. Nice. Stinkor rocking the sighs there. It's so another little blue sword, and then he's got two interchangeable heads. This uh, this one ape head that he comes with. So you see this? I'm gonna. I gotta get used to this still. Okay, I'm gonna try to hold that up so you can see it. This one ape head, with the helmet, the shape it is, and the colors used. He's got a very trap jaw feel to him, and I don't know if that's like by design. It probably is. Maybe that goes with one of the other figures who's got more of that color scheme on his body, but that's really interesting. So let me pose this guy around. Let me see if he's kind of like the same. Same deal here. See, the joint's not popping out of this one, not the way it was on Pale. So this one's actually, this one actually feels better. The armor's a little loose fitting. You can see it kind of bobbles around a little bit, but not like bad. And actually this guy poses quite a bit better. Yeah, I like this one. I like this one quite a bit. Let's give him some weapons. What do you think, the size? You think the size are good? Okay. There we go. So this is this is what Stinkor would look like. Rocking some size. Yeah. Cowabunga. <laughs> this one's cool. This one's definitely my favorite one so far. I mean, obviously I'm a little biased because Stinkor is actually one of my favorite um, Motu figures. And uh, I'm a big Motu fan. So this Ama homage got me. I was I was totally the the audience that they were shooting for with this paint variation. So very cool. Okay, so how about how about we get this guy right here? He's a little more lion-o looking. What's with the turtles? The neck of turtles, guys. I I explained that in the video. You know, they they are Comic-Con exclusives, and it was a small allotment that they put up for sale on their website. You got to remember that there was 5,000 total pieces, or was it 8,000? No, 5,000, right? Plus then an extra 2,000 for the, the diorama. But that's got to be split over five days of Comic-Con and three days online. So think about that. That's a very, very small percentage that they were able to actually sell online and ship. I know it was super frustrating I'm sorry. I really feel bad for everybody that wasn't able to get a hold of one. But unfortunately, you know, like th these these have kind of been like that each year. And they're San Diego Comic-Con exclusives. They're small quantity. And they were very much in demand. I think it was pretty obvious. So I'm really sorry to you guys that missed out. Don't come at me, though. It's totally not. I wasn't the one selling them. So many people have come at me like this is my fault. <laughs> All right. Um, so we got this lion guy here. I keep calling him Lion-O guy. His actual name is Atreyu. Now I'm dropping a sword. But look, the sword even has kind of like a red hilt there with a the nice sword, which is very cool. And then get this guy up here so you can get a good look at him. It's pretty sweet. So he's got a very like a 2011 Thundercats vibe to him. There is no doubt that is totally like what they were shooting for with this one. Yeah, he looks a lot like that that remake of Lion O there. So look at that. You can roll the head around. You know, same articulation that we have on the others. And you know what? I've so far it's only that first figure uh, where the joints felt really loose and popping off. This guy feels a lot better too. Actually, the knees are actually really nice. They got like the ratchets going on there. You see how it's kind of like click, 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 click. That's pretty cool. Not bad. Let's give him his sword here. Oh, <laughs> that's pretty cool. 
Yeah, I like them. I like them. I think that's really cool too. Again, this one was a, like is an obvious homage, right? Like I mentioned, like there's a bunch of like original characters here, but I mean, like they totally threw out a couple of homages, and I'm always okay with stuff like that. I think that's pretty cool. Um, you know, Stinkor and Lionel, they're obvious homages here, so those are pretty neat. Yeah, these are these are pretty cool, and I know um, there's you know there's a there's a pretty big lack of four inch action figures this day and age, at least like nicely articulated and and uh like detailed four inch figures and so it's pretty cool like kickstarter and all these small companies seem to be like the source for this type of toy this day uh because the big toy companies have really kind of moved away from this um you know and even the even the star wars ones um that hasbro's doing they're pretty limited these days and most of them are five points of articulation and i know a lot of collectors don't i mean that's cool for kids that's totally fine for kids but there's a lot of collectors that want more articulation in these guys so i totally get it um so this is what's this guy's name tiberius like james tiberius kirk he's our tiger he's our tigra He's a tiger guy. He's really cool looking. I actually really like the colors. The colors totally pop on this guy. Uh, he's got a really interesting interchangeable head. Look at this head, this helmeted head with like a visor that totally covers the eyes. And he's got like this big scruffy beard. Is he like a, like he has no eyes. I guess he's like a blind warrior. I'm actually going to pop that head on because I'm curious to see what it looks like. Yeah, check that out. That's pretty wicked. I kind of like that. I also like, so he's, he's got the size also and they're silver, but he's also got this really big, like kind of katana like sword with a blue handle. Hmm. I know somebody else who uses a katana sword and likes the color blue. Just saying. Let's see. It's hard to get like a cool pose when I'm just like holding them in hands and showing them to you guys. But yeah, this guy's pretty cool. I actually really like this, this head with this helmet. I don't know what it is, but like, um, yeah, the head the head's pretty cool. That's pretty sweet. So somebody asked where you can get these. Um, I should have a link right now in the description of the stream, which is to the Kickstarter that's running right now for the Deluxe series. Um, I think you can still order these at Spiro Studios website. Let me look it up real quick. I'm gonna I'm gonna do some googling. I should have been more prepared. Go to Spiro, www.spiro.studio. Um, looks like you can get them right there at their site. And I'm actually going to look at them real quick because I should look at some more information for you guys here. Um, some of them are sold out, it looks like, but there's a, most of them are there. And it looks like retail on them is $21.99. So it's www.spiro.studio. S-P-E-R-O dot studio. It's... Uh, it's actually in the, look at the name of the spelling is in the description of this video too. So that is where you can pick them up. All right. Oh, I like this guy. We're going to open up, um, we're going to open up this dude right here. What's his name? Horrid. He's an assassin. Ooh, ooh, I like it. Okay. Sweet collective friendly packages. If any of you guys missed that, you can just slide the card back right out. And you can easily like pull the figures out. So like if you wanted to put them back in the box, you can do it. It's really easy to do it. Right now I'm just making a mess on my floor. I'm just like ripping these open and th throwing the packages on the floor. He is a monkey. He is a monkey or an ape of some sort. There's a lot of them that seem to be like very ape-like. Actually, I really like his colors. Like that, that dark blue and kind of like that, that pinkish purple. What does that, does that remind anybody of anything? Like it's, it's a very familiar color scheme to me, that dark blue and that, that kind of pinkish purple. I really like it. Oh, I wonder if this body actually, this body, this body might totally fit for that, like kind of trap jaw looking head we saw earlier. So this also has, um... Let me open up this little baggie of weapons. Sorry if I'm just like looking down a bunch. So he's got a lot of the same weapons. He's got the size. He's got the bow and arrow. But I really like this little sword. So I'm going to give him that. Maybe. I just threw it on the ground. I threw it on the ground. I'm an adult. All right, check this dude out. 
He's pretty cool. Beast, like the Beast, like from Beauty and the Beast. That's interesting. With the dark blue and that kind of... Like, he definitely wears a cape that, that that's that color, right? I guess his clothes are kind of that dark blue, isn't it? That's pretty cool. More toys should come with baggies of weapons. Yeah, it's pretty cool. These guys are totally loaded up. A lot of the weapons are recycled between figures, but they all seem to have, like, a unique weapon as well, which is really cool. And the weapons do come in various colors, so that definitely helps also. I'm gonna actually... That... that helmeted head that came with Stinkor. I'm going to pop that on here because the color scheme is match. I, I keep calling him Stinkor. His name is actually Toxious. Look at that. See, that gives a definite Trap Jaw vibe, right? I guess if Trap Jaw was like a furry ape-like character, <laughs> but that's kind of cool that he's... Maybe that's, maybe that's the color scheme I'm thinking of, the dark blue and kind of that maroon color. Maybe I'm thinking of Trap Jaw, but that's kind of cool. Yeah, so the interchangeable heads that come with the figures looks like you can mix and match them with the other characters too. And I like that because that means it gives you more variety in the line and gives you more more to build out, like if you want to create armies and stuff. It's hot in here. I'm parched. All right. Let's see what we got. Oh, this guy's cool. Chunari. Chunari Soldier. So this guy, I wonder if he's like an army builder. I wonder if like the Chunari soldiers is like an army of soldiers. Uh, yep, it says these heroic soldiers make up the backbone of the Chunarian army and guards. So like this, this is an army builder. That means you have to go buy 50 of them, right? <laughs> you got to build out an army of this guy. Oh, and he's, he's even got, oh, this is cool. He's got a different helmeted head, which makes him look like a different type of uh, a rank ranking officer. I'll show you guys. Let me get out. He's got this sweet spear. You guys hear the you hear the packages just hitting the floor now? Like I've, I'm at that point where I have a mountain of packages on the floor and they're just smacking the floor. Team and tea drink. That's right. Never seen these. Yeah, these these are fairly new. These came out this year. Um, so if any of you guys are just joining the stream, it's a line called Animal Warriors of the Kingdom from Spiro Studios. It was like a, a fully funded Kickstarter and they just delivered them this year. And now you can just go order the figures on their website. Um, so they're like four inch scale, like little animal characters. Very cool. This guy's neat. This guy's really cool. And his joints feel great. Um, definitely the theme I've noticed all the way through is that most of these figures have all been great. So maybe my, my pale, the very first guy I opened Seems to be the only one that I've had some some like floppy joints and problems with like uh, the joints not staying attached. The rest of these guys all feel pretty decent. So, so this guy has this interchangeable head. Let me show you. What's going on, guys? Hey, I see a lot of new people joining. So, Sam Newsman, what's up? Uh, I don't know how is it, Ead. I add, sorry if I mispronounce it. Chris, what's going on? Kenyo, T-Man, B-Man, what's going on, guys? Uh, wrist armor is loose, B, uh, T-Man, or B-Man. <laughs> T-Man and B-Man, you guys are right next to each other. Yes, I, I mentioned that earlier too. All the armor pieces are, are pretty loose. I, I definitely wish they, they were a little tighter. They fit a little better, because you can see, look at the wrist armor just kind of spins around on there a little bit. Um, it's the same with the shin armor, and even the torso armor just kind of fits on there a little loose. I definitely wish these guys uh, had better fitting armor pieces, um, because when you're moving them around, they definitely feel a little bit like it would be real easy to kind of knock this stuff off or something. So, okay, I'm going to put this other head on. So this is the other head, and it's got like this little fin on the top of the helmet, So, and it's a different color helmet, so it's like... That gives you like two different kinds of officers, which really adds to the whole like army building idea with this particular guy right here. So yeah, I like this one though. The colors are great. The colors are very cool. All right. Got a few more to open up here. <laughs> uh how do you say your name is it fn is oh is it five nights at freddy's plush 90 there's your shout out what's going on oh you prefer the last helmet tuga both helmets are pretty cool i definitely i definitely always approve of a figure that comes with like the multiple styles giving you the options especially when the character is intended to be an army builder i think that's pretty cool oh warrior you're cool 
I appreciate the compliment. Thank you. Ooh, I really like this guy's weapons. So I just opened up this guy right here. He's another very wolf-looking character. And not only does he have like a little battle axe, but he's got these claws. Check out these claws. So that is what I'm going to use on this guy. But let's get a better look at this dude first. I like his... Uh, he, so his fur is like a gray color. And he's got like these this bright green armor bits. Check that out. It's pretty sweet. The full turnaround for you guys. <laughs> Wolverine. Yeah. When they make a turtle figure, you're down. <laughs> that would be awesome. They should totally make a turtle for this line. They got all kinds of other animals. They got m monkeys and wolves and skunks and all kinds of stuff going on. I don't see why they couldn't do a turtle. There's no, there's no reptiles or amphibians. They're all mammals. That's something I've just noticed. Maybe it's a mammals only line. I don't know. I'm with you though. I'd be down for a turtle. That'd be sweet. All right, I'm trying to get these claws in his hands. His right hand is having a hard time gripping on. There we go. Let's see if I can get a cool, like, it's kind of a cool little claw pose for you. Check out the claws. I like those. Those are pretty sweet. Wish I could get better focus for you guys. I'm trying. This camera likes to focus on my face more than it likes to focus on the toys. It's pretty cool. I like them. Oh, but that armor, that armor's falling off. Blah. Be tighter, armor. All right, so this is Horrid. Did we already open a guy named Horrid? Oh, Horrid Assassin. This is a Horrid Knight. Got it. So the Horrid must be the bad guys. And this is another army builder. Possum figure would be cool. And a possum figure would be cool. That's a good idea. Nice job, Turtle Dave. Fist weapons! <laughs> How much are these? Uh, I just looked them up over at Spiro.studios. Uh, they are $21.99 a piece. So that seems to be standard um, for these types of figures that come from these smaller companies. Obviously, the production runs are smaller on these. They don't have like a big factory or manufacturer to produce them. And they're fully painted and have lots of articulation. So it's crazy. It's crazy that that's where we're at in the toy industry, but 20 bucks is about the standard price for an action figure that is this detailed and this articulated. But there you go. So this is actually pretty cool. This is the knight. This is the horrid knight. And he's got an interchangeable helmet also. Oh, I love it. He's a... Um, what, type of, uh, what type of monkey is that? Like Rafiki. What type of monkey is that? Is it a, like a mandarin or uh he, like he's got the nose there it would be a good chunk of change to get the whole line you're totally right and that's that's definitely one of those um those parts that makes it a little harder to buy in um a lot of people would probably have to cherry pick the figures that they really wanted toy collecting is expensive it really is it's hard these days so i just put on the other helmet this one's really cool because he's got like spikes down the middle of the helmet. So like our other knight or our other soldier, this guy's like an army builder. So you can have a lot of different horrid knights and you can utilize the two different helmets to make different looking ranking officers. I think that's pretty cool. And uh, where does bag go? Did I put his, where did I put all his weapons? Oh, oh, these weapons are cool. So he's got this crazy like spiked club. And he's got a sword. Looks a lot like the sword that came with the Treyu, but it's blue instead of red. I really like this crazy spiked club, so we're going to put that in his hand. Mm-hmm. There we go. Check that out. That's pretty sweet. I dig it. I dig it. He's very cool looking. Again, it's a good color combination. I feel like with all of these figures, they did a pretty good job of having like some really neat, unique colors. And one of the things I've noticed is all of the horrid guys, which are like the bad guys, they definitely have that dark blue theme running through them. So kind of like a, a, a signature like look or a uniform for them. So this is, oh, Cruel, cruel Or. That's quite the master sounding name right there. Cruel Or. He's definitely one of the baddies. And let me get his weapons out of here. 
those right there. Again, these color combinations are sweet because it's like the mixture of the dark blue and the light blue. He kind of blends into my pixel land blue background there. But hey, that's that's pretty neat. I like him. And then like it's a really good match against like the darker grays of the fur on his body. And let's see what weapons he comes with. Krulor sounds a little too close to Kruller. Oh, like the donut, like a Kruller. <laughs> good job. I like it. That's a great one. What's up, Crawler? So it looks like, oh, he's got that helmeted head and it's that same one with the eyes covered. Interesting that they included that head with two figures. Oh, he's also got the claws. So those are his weapons. Oh, and he's got the spiked, the spiked club. He's got a lot of stuff. So we're gonna get, I like the claws. So he's getting the claws too. You're getting the claws too. So how's everybody's Friday? Going good so far? Excited about the weekend? There is Cruller Donut. With a sweet claws. The claws look great on this one, actually. I really like that. TMNT wins every time. I do enjoy me some TMNT. Okay, this is the last one I have to open. This is, uh, looks like his name is Kali. I think this is like the big bad. So like this is your main bad guy and this is your main good guy in the line. Oh. So this is our last one we're going to open up, but we're still going to hang out for a bit. So do not fret, my friends. Hopefully Marvel Legends will get more X-Men waves. Yeah, that'd be cool. That, that new one that's coming out looks pretty sweet. They've really been cranking on those, those Marvel Legends out, man. Talk about, talk about a line that is hard to keep up with and, and hard to buy into, you know, with those being 20 to 25 bucks a piece. And the fact that they come out so rapidly, it's like, I cannot keep up with Marvel legends, even though they look so good. Okay. So here's this guy. He's got a sweet ponytail. Look at that. I love it. This is like the big bad. So this is the main bad guy right here. It's very cool. Do you think you'll do a collab with Mike from Retro Blasting? Michael, it's very possible. You know, we've talked about it in the past. Um, we never really came up with any solid plans. Um, so it's not off the table by any means. I, I'm always down to do collaborations. And I think I'm going to have a lot more of that coming up soon. Um, you know, um, I, I've been uh, talking actually to my buddy, and I'll just go ahead and say it because I'm sure it's not a big deal. I've been talking to my buddy Dan over at Toy Galaxy, and he and I have definitely been planning some sort of collaborations. So uh, if you've never checked out Toy Galaxy, you can go give them a shout out. Go give them a look up. They got some good stuff. I know my buddy Toy Bro is still in the chat here. I'd be down to collab with you too, Toy Bro. We can do something together. So uh, this guy has an interchangeable helmet with a really, really cool design. Like, look at this. My problem is, is that the joint is real loose on this one. Like, look, it's not really clipping in very good. Look, see how loose it is? Oh, it's such a cool head, but it's not, it's not really staying on very good. That's a bummer. I'm not sure what's going on there because the other head is just fine. The other head's not, yeah, the other head clips all the way down just fine. This one's got the sweet ponytail anyway, so I'll probably rock this one. And uh, where's his little bag? Did I lose? What weapon? Where's his weapons? Oh, oh, he's got like, look at this little scepter. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's a fist. It's a golden fist. That's awesome. I love it. Okay, so he's going to get the little golden fist scepter for sure. Because he's like hardcore, this dude right here. And then he's also got this katana blade. Yeah, that's how you know he's like, an evil ruler. He's got a golden scepter with a fist on the top of it. He rules with a golden fist. Look at that dude. I like him. It's so cool. Uh, yeah, Joshua Kenny just mentioned the Kickstarter with the big apes. Yes, I, I brought that up earlier and the link is actually in the video description that, of the stream right now. So they're doing like a deluxe series of these and they have like big apes, like big gorillas and big honking awesome looking figures. So if these look interesting to you and you want to pick some of these up, maybe go check out that Kickstarter. Take a look at it. See if it's something you're interested in. The figures do look very cool. And I got to say, like, these are fun. Um, my, my, my minor issues or my issues, I guess, with these figures... Um, 
The armor's a little too loose. I wish the armor fit on them a little bit tighter. And I had some problems where the joints feel a little looser than I'd like them to be. But otherwise, they are a very cool looking batch of action figures. And you can see the colors are just so cool on these dudes. Yeah, there's a good focus for you. The colors are great. I mean, they're just very, very vibrant and very cool looking figures. Um, lots of cool, like... Look at these guys. The characters are very cool. The weapons are very cool. So these are a lot of fun. Um, my favorites, I mean, I'm definitely going to be um, easy, obviously. This is this is obviously my favorite one, like, right? Like, obviously, this is Pixel Dan's favorite figure in the line because he looks like Stinkor. Um, I really like him, but I also, I really like um, our dude with the, the golden fist here. I think he's pretty sweet. And uh, the tiger's great, too, especially with that mask. That mask is really sweet. So these are Animal Warriors of the Kingdom. You can go check them out. Um, the link again is www.spiro.studio. You can just Google search Spiro Studios and find them or Animal Warriors of the Kingdom. And they've got that active Kickstarter right now that you can check out as well. So they're pretty cool stuff. Um, I definitely have to give a shout out to the folks at Spiro because they sent these to me. So, you know, full disclosure... Uh, they sent these to me to check out on the show, uh, but hopefully I did justice showing them off for you guys so you know what to expect with them and showing everything about them. So, uh, you know, it's Friday night. Just wanted to hang out with you guys a little bit. We've uh, opened up some toys. So what are you guys up to? What are you guys doing right now? Oh, I picked, uh, Eric, I picked your favorites too. That's awesome, man. Oh, it's Saturday for Five Nights at Freddy's Plush. Happy Saturday. It's uh, 7.30 p.m. on Friday for me here in the Midwest in the United States. Uh, oh, Blue Dreamer Coon says, Greetings from Mexico. Will you be at Unboxing Toy Convention? Yes, I will. I'm really excited about that. It's my first ever like convention outside of the country um, over in Mexico City going to the unboxing toy convention. They're bringing me as a guest for the show. I will be there and I'm really excited because I've, I've met so many like fans from Mexico online and I'm really excited to meet you guys in person. That's going to be really cool. Uh, Chris wants to know if I collect any toy guns like the old Intertech guns. I don't. I don't really collect uh, toy guns. I don't really have a lot of role play stuff, period. The, the closest I have to that is like uh, some of the old Masters of the Universe swords, but that's really it. Thanks, Caden. I appreciate the compliment. That is awesome. Uh, is it only a Kickstarter or will they be at Big Bad Toy Store or retail? Um, so it's a Kickstarter right now, but I believe Big Bad Toy Store carried the first run after its Kickstarter finished and you can buy them on their website directly right now. They won't be in like local retail stores, but you should be able to buy them online. So if you don't want to do the Kickstarter, as long as the Kickstarter funds, you should be able to track them down somewhere online to pick them up. Oh, New Jersey in the house. What's up, Turtle Dave? <laughs> uh, okay, Lorenzo says, what toy series would you say are slash were the most consistent when it came to build quality? My shout was Ghostbusters toys from the 90s. Oh, um, yeah. I, it's hard to say. I guess you just mean like maintain the same kind of quality all the way across? Because I would definitely say a lot of those retro lines did that. I mean, Masters of the Universe lasted all the way from 82 to 87. And it was very consistent all the way through as far as quality goes. In fact, they even got better the more successful the line was. Um, the original Ninja Turtles series, the quality of the toys were great. The characters got weird at the end. But now, some of those weird things that came out at the end are like the most sought after toys. They're, they're so weird. I love them. Uh, do you like manga action figures? Um, you know, I'm not real huge into manga or anime. I'm, you know, a little bit. I've taken a look at some uh, Dragon Ball figures from uh, SH Figure Arts lately because I definitely uh, do appreciate Dragon Ball. I used to watch the heck out of Dragon Ball Z uh, when I was younger, specifically when I was a teenager. So that's, you know, I, I dabble in it a little bit. Uh, J Mania, I do not have any videos reviewing the Vintage Masters of the Universe swords, but that is not out of the question for the future. I, I want to do so many videos on my Vintage Masters of the Universe stuff, um, especially because I've been doing a lot with Vintage Masters right now, uh, off of YouTube, which I'll tell you more about later. <laughs> um... What are my thoughts on the five points of articulation Super 7 Masters of the Universe figures other than Scareglow stealing the show? You know, I like the reaction line, and I know it's very, like, um, a lot of people don't like it, but it's definitely got its audience. 
Um, I've reviewed all of them that have come out, and they're definitely like weird in the sense that the original Masters of the Universe line was created to be the anti three and three quarter inch skinny action figure. Like they made them five inches and big and bulky to purposely outshine Kenner Star Wars figures. So the fact that we're getting He-Man figures done in that style now is super weird, but I love them for what they are. I think they're a lot of fun and that scare glow is crazy awesome. They obviously don't replace the original Masters figures. Those will always be the best, but I like Masters of the Universe, and I like buying collectibles, and anything Masters I can get my hands on, I usually buy. So I, I like them. I think they're cool. What is your favorite toy line to collect? Um, definitely Masters of the Universe. Definitely Vintage Masters of the Universe. I, I, I still buy things from the Vintage Master stuff. I'm still working on those collections. They, they give me the most thrill. After that, Vintage Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. If we're talking about modern stuff, uh, my favorite things to buy from modern stuff is definitely a lot of the, the NECA stuff, specifically like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I love anything they do with that. I love the Predator and Alien stuff. I don't buy all of it, but I do buy a lot of it that I think is really cool. Um, I buy some Star Wars Black Series figures. I buy some Marvel Legends. I just kind of cherry pick that stuff, my favorites. Um, and then my favorite like modern original toy line that's in stores right now is definitely Grocery Gang. It's a kid's line, but it's like, it's the best original toy line, in my opinion, since stuff from the 80s and 90s. That's my favorite. Uh, it says, have you ever bumped into mini Boglins as a collector? Not the larger finger puppet styles, but the smaller rubber lumps with the different tribes. Hang on. This dude right here? Is this right here? Is this what you're talking about? Because Totally. Totally right there. Boom. I got a whole bunch of, uh, I got a whole bunch of mini boglins up here. Um, yes, mythic legions. I've got a bunch of mythic legions figures. I definitely collect those. Um, I did a live video unboxing a bunch of those one night too. Um, so I totally have a bunch of those. What toy line would I like to see back on store shelves? Um, gosh, that is so hard, man. I don't know. They're like, everything's had like some sort of a comeback. Um, I would love to see Masters actually get into stores. I just don't think it's going to happen without some sort of modern media or a cartoon because they need something for kids. I guess that'd be my answer. Uh, which characters would I like to see in World of Nintendo? That's a good question. Um, I hope the World of Nintendo line isn't slowing down because it doesn't seem like it's been coming out as consistency, consistently as it was. But they really nailed a lot of characters. I would love to see them do all of the Koopa Kids. All of the Koopa Kids, like all of them from like Mario 3. I think that would be really sweet. Um, more side characters would be awesome. Like I know we, we have to keep getting Marios and Luigis. It makes sense. And they've done some cool variations. But man, there's so many cool characters like in the Mario universe and the Zelda universe. I would love to see a lot of that stuff be brought in. That would be cool. And if they could go more old school and do stuff like um, Punch-Out, that'd be cool. I think Punch-Out was one of the things that was off limit for some reason. Uh, but that would be really cool, too. Do you think Hasbro is going to bury G.I. Joe? I have no idea, Chris. Um, I know they've been struggling to find a, a way to do G.I. Joe in modern times. I just, I don't know. I would love to see it. I would love to see it be successful again. There's, I, I've never been like a big Joe collector, uh, but there's such a big fan base out there for it. And I, I want nothing more than there to be a nice, successful Joe line for them. Uh, the movie Masters of the Universe is probably coming out in 2019. I hope so. I am still very skeptical, and uh, when I can actually buy a ticket, I'll believe it. <laughs> that, that movie's been in production for like 10 years. B-Man says NECA punch-out figures. Oh my god, I would be all over that. You have no idea. You have no idea. Thanks, Warrior. I appreciate it. Um, am I hopeful for that new He-Man movie to be good? Of course I am. But more than that, I am hopeful for that new He-Man movie to target kids and get kids excited because they are the future of the brand. Okay. Like, obviously I want something that I would like and I would appreciate, but it's way more important for kids to care about it and get excited about it. Way more important. I've had all kinds of toys directed at me specifically. If we want Masters of the Universe to live on, we need kids to care about it. Otherwise... It dies with us, and that's just the way it is. So, as far as I'm concerned, that movie needs to be for kids. I think that's just how it needs to be. My pet monster with a bunch of question marks. What about it? I don't have one. I wish I did. Oh, unless you see... Uh, do you see my... Um, I got the little vinyl one up there. Oh, where's he at? He's, he's back here. 
I don't know if you can see them. I've got the vinyl one. Have I considered going to Alaska? Um, yeah, I would love to see Alaska. I've never been there. If I ever have a chance to come, I would love to. I think that'd be awesome. Kids, our future. I'm with you. <laughs> what did I think of the Battletoads announcement? Do I think there'd be new toys? Well, I'm bummed because I don't have an Xbox One, and I don't really plan to get an Xbox One, so I probably won't be able to play Battletoads. Uh, I think it's kind of neat that they're bringing it back, and if they make toys, I will buy them. <laughs> No doubt about it. I will buy those. That's cool. This cup is cool. Thanks for the thanks for that, Warrior. It's my turtle's cup. I do not know who a best actor would be to play He-Man. It's I would I, I kinda want it to be like a no name. I want him to be like not somebody that we know already. I don't know. Am I going to San Diego Comic Con this year? Chris, yes I am. And we are actually like a month away from it now. I will definitely be there. I will definitely be covering the show like always and doing some other fun stuff while I'm there. So I hope you guys watch. Ooh, good question. Am I a Cubs fan? Yep, sure am. Um, I'll be honest though, I don't watch a ton of baseball. I'm not like one of those diehard fans. Um, so I mean, I guess you can call me a poser fan. But I've grown up as a Cubs fan. My family's a Cubs fan, so I was born into being a Cubs fan. So, yep, go Cubs. Boo Cardinals. If my wife's around here somewhere, that, that was for her. <laughs> um, Blue Dreamer, I don't know if I have an opinion on the Bandai Saint Seiya Myth Cloth figures because I've never even had them. I'm sorry. Uh, Dwayne Johnson is He-Man? I don't, like... I love The Rock. I love everything he's in. But the problem is, is when you cast a personality like The Rock to be He-Man, he's not He-Man, he's just The Rock. You know what I mean? Like, he's got a personality of his own. Like, he's The Rock. So I don't know. I don't think I'm on board with that. I am not from Chicago, but I'm in Illinois. So, yes, Chicago. Chicago area. <laughs> Uh, the original TMNT comic books, I do not have any of those original issues, like the actual issues. I have trades with all of the issues in it, but I don't have the actual issues. Dolph Lundgren for King He-Man. Toy Bro, I would be so on board with that. If there's like a reason for a King He-Man to be in a movie, yep, sign me up. I'm on board with that. <laughs> Oh, we're going to go down this road, huh? Nessa wants to know if I like the current direction of Star Wars and how The Last Jedi was handled. Um, so I liked The Last Jedi fine. I didn't love The Last Jedi. And I didn't hate The Last Jedi. I loved The Force Awakens. Like, love The Force Awakens. Um, I really liked Rogue One. I have not yet seen Solo. I want to see Solo. And I think that's pretty much my opinion on it. I'm just, it is what it is. The original trilogy is always going to be my favorite. I don't think anything's ever going to outdo it. I love those movies. They're always going to be there. I can always enjoy them. So that's my stance, I guess. Lundgren will always be my He-Man too. Actually, John Irwin will always be my He-Man, but Lundgren's up there. Hey, Jason! Jason is in the chat, and he's the guy from Spiro Studios. So he says, thanks for reviewing the figures. I forgot to mention the head, shoulders, elbows, hips, and feet are all designed to pop off for a mix and match play feature. Thank you, Jason, for clearing that up a little bit. The only figure that I had a problem with where his, his elbow kind of fell out all the time was pale. Like, it just falls out. Um, but now we know. Now we know we can mix and match the parts, and they were designed that way. So that is awesome. So very cool. Thank you, Jason. I appreciate that. I hope you enjoyed this little video. I hope it was a different format but I hope you still enjoyed it. It was fun being able to interact with people and they were asking questions about the figures. So hopefully some more people will come check out your Kickstarter. <laughs> if children ever grow into He-Man, they could be playing with the same toys guys our age did as children. It's very possible. Yeah, you're totally right. Uh, I've given my son a small handful of some vintage He-Man figures, and he thinks they're cool, but he's not, like, super into it as much as into, like, his dinosaurs and his grocery gang toys. He has totally got his own likes and loves, and I love that, and I appreciate that. Uh, and, you know, I just let him, I let him go to town on, on all of the stuff that he really loves. Yeah, Toy Bro, totally. 
Uh, it does totally open up a lot of swappable options and possibilities for play value. So that's pretty cool to know. Very cool. Hey, Warrior, thank you very much. I'm glad you enjoy uh, those videos. All right, guys, we're about at the hour mark. So I think we're going to go ahead and do like a last call right now. I'm probably going to be signing off pretty soon. I hope you enjoyed this. My plan is to kind of do this once a week. If I can sit down with you guys once a week, open some toys, just have a chat with you guys, I would love to keep doing this. I want to thank you guys for joining and watching. We've had a lot of people in here and a lot of interaction. And I think that is so very cool. Stream playing games again. That is definitely something I'm going to do. I promise. Um, my plan right now for my studio, as I'm still building it, I'm going to set up a section of my studio that is specifically for streaming stuff. And once that's set up, it'll be way easier for me to stream some games. And then I'm going to stream um, some toy related games. Like I did that He-Man game that one time. I want to do more of that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, some nice from plastic to pixels kind of streams. So expect that along with some live toy unboxings coming out down the road. So it was a very fast hour, guys. And uh, thank you guys very much for tuning in and watching. Uh, if you're kind of coming late, uh, the stream will be up, uh, you know, so you can watch the replay afterwards. For, if any of you guys are watching this after the fact, that way you guys can check out these figures and see them for yourselves. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me. I think I'm going to uh, log out for the night because my family is here now. So I'm going to go hang out with them for Friday night and uh, roll right into the weekend. So guys, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I appreciate all of you. Uh, always a pleasure. And uh, I, I just I really appreciate your support. Thanks for watching, guys. More videos are on the way. Have a 